So we are going to spend the next few minutes talking about the document itself. Uh, so we've been talking about uh, the process. Uh, for much of the last couple of days, we've been talking about the process. Process is important. Process is important. There really is, is no shortcut. We have to go through the process, uh, and the process involves things like identifying the stakeholders, engaging the stakeholders in consultation, and so on and so forth. All the good things that we talked about uh, thus far. But then there's the expectation uh, on the part of the audiences that uh, Dr. Demp I mean, uh, Professor Dempsey uh, was talking about, there's the expectation that you will produce a document. There's an expectation that you will produce a document. So, and that document will be called the National Security Strategy. What will that document look like? What I put on the board uh, is a definition of uh, national security uh, that, you know, in fact, I forgot to, uh, to, to put the, um, to attribute the source, is from the UN, is from the United Nations. And it's interesting how they look at national security strategy. They focus on the methods. They focus on the methods. Is a description of the methods that a state will utilize to do something very specific, to achieve, to realize a certain vision, to achieve uh, certain goals. Uh, and the vision and the goals are clearly defined, they're clearly articulated in the national security policy. And this goes to the hierarchies that we've been talking about. Policy before strategy. Policy before strategy. Vision before policy. Interests before vision. Values before interests. It's, it's important that we understand that. So we're talking about objectives, we're talking about priorities, and we're talking about resources uh, when we talk about national security strategies. So what are the elements of a national security strategy? What is it that you'd like to see in a national security strategy? Well, I don't know about you, but I can tell you what I'd like to see uh, in national security strategies. Uh, of course, in the preamble, uh, the, the values and the interests of the state need to be articulated right from the get-go. The values and the interests of the state. Because that will guide just about everything. That will guide just about everything. But you also have to articulate your vision. You have to tell us what your, what your guiding principles are. What are the objectives of the strategy? What are the priorities? What about the plans? What are the activities uh, that uh, you will uh, implement based on these strategies? Don't forget the issue of resources. So let's talk a little bit about the vision. Colonel Dempsey uh, touched on that. Why is the vision important? Why is the vision important? Very simple. The vision is important because it's, it's tantamount to a guide. It's a guide. The vision is our guide. The vision is the guide that will be the basis for the development of the national security policy. And the vision is the guide that will be the basis, therefore, for the development of our national security strategy. And that's not all. There are other strategic planning 
uh, they will rest on that vision. The vision also tells us what is the desired end state. What is the desired end state? When we talk about national security, what exactly do we mean? How do we know that during this time frame, we will achieve security, we will achieve national security? So the vision is absolutely fundamental. But the vision needs to be very clear. The, the vision needs to be very clear. The vision needs to be realistic. Uh, here in the United States, there's a, an expression that says, pie in the sky. Not a very good vision if it articulates something that's completely unrealistic. Uh, if, uh, if, uh, if the vision of your national security strategy implies that in 10 years, in 20 years, your country will achieve the levels of national security as a developed country, for example, that might not be realistic. The other thing that we need to uh, keep in mind uh, that should be part of this document uh, should be the guiding principles. What are, what are the principles that guide us? What are the principles that really support uh, the whole undertaking? Uh, have we considered the rule of law? Have we considered human security? Are we placing the citizen at the center of our thinking about national security? If we consider human rights, how inclusive is this process? In our countries, uh, where the fit between the nation and the state uh, sometimes is problematic, when being inclusive is a must, uh, is inclusiveness one of the guiding principles? What about transparency? Again, very, very important. Are we transparent in this process? You know, uh, well, I think it was uh, my brother Matt was saying that, look, you know, if, if everybody knows that you're putting together the national security strategies just to protect the regime, if, you, if everybody knows that the national security strategy is really just to protect an individual, well, come on. You're not being transparent. So transparency uh, should be uh, an important guiding uh, principle. But beyond principles, the strategy must clearly articulate, the document must clearly identify the objectives. What are the objectives? What are the objectives? Is the objective security, is the, is the main objective security? Well, if yes, security for whom? We have to be specific. Security for whom? What kind of security? Are you talking about human security? Are you talking about state-centric security? Uh, uh, Defense-based security? What kind of security are we talking about? How will it be achieved? How will you achieve that security that you've just defined? What is the time frame? What is the time frame? You need to be specific. And then you need to consider the metrics. How do you know you're on the right path? How do you know you're on the right path? Five years uh, after the process has initiated, 10 years, 20 years, how do you know you're actually achieving the objectives you set out to achieve? Where is the objective? Is the objective political? Are you, are you trying to achieve political stability, national cohesion, 
What exactly is your objective? Is it economic development? Are you articulating the difference between, for example, economic growth and economic development? Are you taking that into account? Is your objective self-sufficiency? Uh, this morning, uh, somebody brought up the issue of um, food uh, as a key component of national security. Are you self-sufficient uh, in terms of food, uh, in terms of industrial goods, in terms of services, in terms of qualified labor? Is it what you are trying to achieve? The other thing that I like to see uh, in a national security strategy is a clear definition of priorities. What are the country's priorities? What are the state's priorities? Somebody said uh, in this uh, workshop that uh, uh, in many of our African countries, everything is a priority. Everything is a priority. That's understandable because uh, the pressing needs are so many, and they're so urgent. But I think that as professionals in the security sector, as individuals who deal with matters of formulating a national security strategies, I think that it's important to understand clearly the difference between threats and challenges. The immediacy of threats is really important uh, to understand. Threats must be addressed immediately. Challenges must be addressed before they become threats. So it's very important uh, that we prioritize. Uh, when we confuse threats and challenges, then it's very difficult for us to prioritize. The other thing that we should also uh, keep in mind here uh, is not just identifying the priorities, but the issue of sequencing, also uh, very important. What is the first step? Where is the second step? What is the third step? Ideally, uh, the strategy uh, should clearly uh, articulate uh, that. And of course, this pertains to the activities. When we talk about the activities, what exactly are we, are, are we going to do in terms of uh, uh, implementing uh, the strategy? So we're talking about both planning, uh, some of the things that Colonel uh, Dempsey talked about, uh, planning, but it's not just about planning, it's about execution as well. You know, planning and execution go uh, together. Uh, because, of course, the strategy will hinge uh, on the activities. This is really how you're going to, uh, to uh, evaluate your success. If, if your activities are producing results, you can say, well, I have a good strategy. If your activities are not producing results, well, obviously, you do not have a good uh, strategy. Resources, as Colonel Dempsey also said, very important, and I keep making the point, I keep stressing the point. Uh, my brothers and sisters in Africa always talk about the lack of resources in discussing issues of strategy. And I keep saying, no, the resources are there. The resources, are, you know the resources are there. There's no such thing as a poor African country. There's no such thing. Now, there are few poor Africans. There are few poor Africans, or quite a few, too many, in fact. But it's not because their countries are poor. It's, it's not because the resources are not there. Whether you're talking about natural resources, human resources, financial resources, you name it, the resources are there. The data are there. The data are there to back me up. Africa exports more 
resources than imports. Let me put it even more directly. Africa exports more money than it takes in. So it's not a question of resources. It's a question of the management of the resources. That is the question, the management of the resources. How we allocate the resources, how we allocate the resources, how we utilize the resources, how efficiently do we do that? How much waste is there in the equation? If you were to remove all the waste and leakages from that equation, I guarantee you, you will not have a deficit of resources. And the human resources are there too. What is one of the things that Africa exports the most? Human resources. Is that the African states export the human resources and import their consult uh, uh, foreign consultants. Hmm. That's one of the things that Africa does best. So the resources uh, are there. But the other thing also, just to end, uh, is that we need to develop the habit of assessment. We need to develop the habit of assessment. I know it's a bit of a pain, uh, but it's so critical. You set an objective. At a certain given time, you have to go back and look at it. How am I doing? How am I doing? Uh, you are given a certain amount of resources to spend toward that objective. Every so often, regularly, you need to assess how you're doing. Uh, we need to understand that um, this issue of monitoring and evaluation uh, must be an, a, a critical component uh, to, uh, to the package. So these, uh, from where I stand, uh, are some of the elements that I like to see uh, in this document. Now, of course, it will vary from country to country. Uh, some countries, you know, I, I, I love to, uh, to uh, cite uh, Cabo Verde. You know, they, uh, they start uh, their national security st strategy uh, with, um, uh, with uh, what they call the, it's, it's the, the national ID card the national identification card. Who are we? Who are we? Hmm? To remind ourselves of who we are. This is who we are. Hmm? Also, to tell others who we are. Because speaking to uh, what Colonel Dempsey was, was, was mentioning on the audiences, you're writing a strategy for multiple audiences. You need to remind yourselves who we are. Because unless you know who you are, well, you lost right from there. You need to know who you are to know where you're going. You need to know who you are, not just where you stand. You need to know who you are. And others also need to know who you are. What is it that you want to accomplish? How are you going to get there? Because it's on the basis of that that they will determine if it's worth helping you and how. So Ben, let me, let me stop here. Uh, and if there are any questions, I'll be more than happy to entertain them. Thank you.